Okay. Well, I know that the numerator is supposed to be 349. Because I can't have a decimal on that fraction. It's going to be 349. But what's my denominator going to be? 100 or 1,000? What do you think? 100. How many spots are you moving that decimal? Two. two. Two spots. That means you have two zeros. It ends in the, even though that's a whole number out there, it still ends in the hundredths, doesn't it? Yeah. That's not the thousandths, that's the hundredths. You should have it over 100. Feel okay with it so far? Yes. Practice just a couple on your own. I'll give you, a, give you four of them, they go real quick. And we'll move on to addition subtraction. So if they are decimals, I want you to write them as fractions. If they're fractions, I want you to write them as decimals. So we got three decimals to change into fractions and only one fraction to change into a decimal. And I also put some negatives up there. Are the negatives going to hold you back at all? No. no. Nah, they're just going to stay, stick along with those problems. It's not going to really change it much. How about the 3.9? 3.9 should be 39 over what? 100. Okay. So 39 over 10? 39. It's got to be a whole number. Over how much? Ten. Not a hundred. You only moved to one spot. It should be ten. It ends in tenths. We should have it over ten. Point one two five. I'm hoping you got one hundred twenty five over. Hundred. How many spots did you move? Thousand. How many spots did you move the decimal? Three. How many zeros should you have then? Three. That's going to be. One eight. One eight. That's right. One eight. You can reduce that. You actually can reduce that, and you should reduce that if you can. If you can reduce your fraction, do it. 25 goes into both those numbers. Actually, 125 goes into both those numbers. It goes in one time and eight times. That actually does equal one eighth. So you can reduce these fractions. That's great. We're just saying one. Okay. Next up, we've got negative 2.12. We need to get negative 212. Negative 212 is over 10, over 100, or over 1,000? What do you think? How much? 100. 100. 100. Because you only move decimal two spots. It ends in the hundredths. You should have it over 100. And again, can you simplify that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What goes into that? Two. More than two. Yeah. Two four. goes into it, you would four. get Five. four goes into it. Two goes into it, you get 106, right? Two goes into that, you get 53. Just 53 over 20. Negative 53 over 20. If I've done that right, did I do that right? Okay. Last up, negative 350 over a thousand or more. Write that as a decimal. If I write negative 350 over 1,000 as a decimal, what's it going to be? Definitely negative. I'll give you that. So this says you move the decimal place, an imaginary decimal place, one, two, three spots for each zero, point, three, five, zero. Or another way to write this, if you'd like to show the zero up front, it's appropriate to write negative 0 0.350. Why people do that is so that you understand that that first zero means there's a decimal place right after it. So you got to look at that and say, oh, I, I get it. I'm not going to misplace that decimal. Raise your hand if you're okay with changing fractions of decimals and rounding. What about, um, how you changed, you reduced it? I did reduce it. By what? Four. Four? Yeah. Four goes into both 212 and 100. Oh, you know what? I meant, meant to say that. That's supposed to be 25. Five times 20, no? 
Yeah, well, it should be four. It should be 25. I, my bad. I asked you if I had it right. You guys don't have my back. <laughs> so you have my back on this. Oh, my goodness. Come on, it's on videotape. I just made a mistake on videotape. <laughs> I'm like an editor that. I make mistakes all the time. It happens. So you reduced it by what? Four? Four. four. Yeah. 53. If I did it right, you should, you should be checking. I hope I did it right. Did I do it right? Yes. Yeah, I think that was the only mistake that I had. I mean, I was testing you guys. You passed. <laughs> All right, the next thing we're going to talk about in our class, we're going to talk about how to add and subtract decimals. What's very nice about this is we've already done the legwork, the groundwork for adding and subtracting things. We're just going to add on the fact that we have decimals, learn what to do in that situation, use our addition rules again, and we'll be done.